Hi, Ravi Chakra here. In this video, I'm going to talk about the anatomical and physiological and physical differences between contractive strength and expansive strength, which in Chinese is called Nei Jin. So first I'll talk about contraction and then I'll talk about expansion. In order to understand contraction, you have to know something about levers because the, our body consists of bones, which are levers, and muscles, which move those levers, exert force on those levers to move them. This diagram shows two different kinds of levers. The top one is a person pushing a bar, moving a stone. The lower one is uh, the biceps muscle pulling the forearm bone when there's a weight in the hand lifting it. Let's look at the top lever. The, the hand is the force application point, the input force. The bottom of, le of the iron bar where it rests on the floor is a fixed point called the fulcrum. It's, that's the part that it wrote, the bar rotates about. And the contact point of the bar to the weight is called the output force, or the output part. The distance from the hand, or the input to the fulcrum, divided by the distance from the application force to the fulcrum is about five to one. That is, the length of the bar is about five times the length from the fulcrum to the weight. That means that if the person pushes with a force of 10 pounds, the weight will be pushed with a force of not 10 pounds, but five times that, 50 pounds. At the same time, for the, if the weight is moved one inch, the hand will have to move five times that, or five inches. So it multiplies force by a factor of five, but it cuts movement by a factor of five. The arm is the opposite. If you look at the distance from the um, application of the force near the, uh, on the um, uh, forearm bone, the, 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 the radius, the distance from that point to the fulcrum is about only one fifteenth that from the weight to the fulcrum. That's the way it is in an arm. And the result of that is that if the weight is 10 pounds to lift it, the biceps muscle has to exert um, a contractive force of 15 times that or 150 pounds. At the same time, if the biceps muscle contracts by one inch, the weight will move 15 inches. So this one multiplies movement and reduces force, each by a factor of 15. Next, let's talk about expansive strength. In my view, and I can't prove this, but there is evidence for it, that expansive strength is different from contractive strength as follows. In contractive strength, we send neural electricity to the units of contract and contraction in muscles, causing the muscles to contract. In expansive strength, we are also sending electricity through the nerves, but not to the muscles now, but to the water to the water in the tissues and mostly in the muscles. Uh, you know, 70% of us is water. And that causes the water to expand and to become gel-like, which means it has strength and it has, um, um, it can cause movement. So, do I, can I prove this? No, but there is evidence and it comes from Gerald Pollack, who has worked with water and shows that there is this, four, what he calls the fourth phase of water, 
which is instead of H2O, it's H3O2, two molecules of water combine, and a hydrogen atom is released, and this forms a different form of water. The advantages of expansive strength over contractive strength are as follows. One, instead of binding the joints with, this, with huge amounts of force, which contraction does, expansive strength opens the joints. Contraction is, push, is pulling, pulling things together. Expen extension is pushing things apart. Because of the amount of, of um, strength and tightness that is caused by contraction, blood is cut off, chi is cut off. Also, extra chemicals are needed for the muscles that are not needed in expansive strength because in, in expansive strength you're dealing with the property of water, not something that needs chemical energy. The result of that is that you don't get tired with expansive strength, but with contractive strength, you get tired very quickly because the chemicals that are needed start to become exhausted. Another thing is that low contractive strength lowers sensitivity. The more strength that's involved, the less, the inner, internal strength is, that's involved in that, of that sort, the lower the sensitivity. Nei Jin, or expansive strength does not do that. So expansive strength also bathes the cells in electricity, which is good because it helps the transfer of oxygen into the cells and nutrients and waste products out. In, um, in contractive strength, that the opposite is true. It halts that while contraction is going on. Contraction is understood by an opponent, whereas it's not, contra expansive strength is not understood by an opponent. And so it's much more effective. It allows a lot of free movement, which is the fa jin, which is very fast and very powerful. So there are a lot of advantages to um, expansive strength over contractive strength. Another one is root. The, when you're pulling, you're pulling yourself out of your root. When you're expanding, you're pushing down into your root. So that's one. Um, expansive strength is unified. Contractive strength is very localized. Contractive strength, of course, is strong, and it has a lot of movement, and it um, is useful in life. But that doesn't mean that, it would, that it's the kind of strength that we use in Taiji. Thank you.